All right, so today we're going to talk about intravenous catheterization and why we do it. Basically, intravenous catheterization is when we place a hollow device, i.e. an IV catheter, into the vein. We do it for a number of different re reasons. The main reason why we do it is for IV fluid administration, and we use this to help replace volume loss, maintain blood pressure during surgery, maintain hydration, especially if there is some blood loss, uh, or maintain hydration if there's vomiting or diarrhea, to help with maintaining electrolyte balances, and to aid in metabolism of anesthetics. The thought being that um, the kidneys are uh, working to get the fluid out of the body, so then the the drugs will be excreted quicker. We also use it for quick venous access in case of an emergency and it's less trauma to the vein. If you think about it, it's a flexible uh, needle as opposed to a non-flexible hard needle. So we do use it for delivering of drugs. Mainly we use it for uh, induction drugs. We use it to uh, administer propofol, ketamine midazolam. We also may use it to uh, administer some perivascularly irritating drugs like thiopentothal. Thiopentothal getting out getting outside of the vein can cause um, some sloughing of the skin, so you need to make sure you have IV access. We also use it if we're using incompatible drugs like diazepam and oxymorphone. We can't put them in the same syringe, so by using an IV catheter we can administer diazepam, then we can flush, then we can administer oxymorphone. We do use it for administering emergency drugs, especially if there's an emergency during surgery. We can give epinephrine IV, atropine, or lidocaine IV to help with uh, CPR. We also may use it to reverse drugs. Dexmatomidine we can reverse with adipamazole, and we can reverse uh, oxymorphone with light, with naloxone, and uh, this um, gives us the quick uh, access that we need. We also may use it for a constant rate infusion and sometimes we'll do this with antibiotics or analgesic and this gives us a constant amount of very dilute concentrations at, over a period of time or it also gives drugs that cannot be bolus. So the types of catheters, there's two main types of catheters. There's through the needle, and basically this is the catheter um, is inside the needle and you feed it through a sterile needle. And generally we use these for central lines and pick lines. And some examples that you may see are Venocath, uh, Delmed, and Intracath. These are usually jugular catheters. Um, they do take some experience to place, and they do take some skill. The most common catheter that you'll probably see for peripheral catheterization is an over the needle. The catheter is fed over the needle, and these are examples are like Insight, B and D, and Peel Aways. So these come in different sizes, ranging from 24 up to 16 gauge. We generally will use a uh, 18 to 22 gauge needle. Um, 24s are for extreme, extreme emergencies or for small neonate kittens or puppies. We don't use them for anything really of value other than neonates and kittens. So placement sites, we may place them in the cephalic vessels, the saphenous vessels, dorsal pedal vessels, um, ear vessels, or jugular vessels, and it depends on the type of catheter that we use. In order to place a catheter, we're going to need to use clippers, a uh, 40 or 50 blade, we need sterile prep with chlorhexidine and alcohol, and we need tape. Catheters. Um, depending on the size of animal, we also want to check the catheter to make sure there's no burrs, that it moves freely. We need some tape, uh, one inch. We need about two pieces that will encircle the length of the limb. One of those we want to split in half. We need some vet wrap. We need either our injection cap or our T-port. The T-port does need to be flushed properly. You need to put fluid in, close the... Um, 
clasp and then you can set it down. We need about two syringes filled with um, some heparinized saline. These are normally 3cc syringes, some gauze squares, and a piece of paper towel to uh, keep things clean. And here is what everything should look like when we have it set up properly for an IV catheter placement. So you do need to make sure you have all of your supplies ready before you start. Is your T plush port flush properly? We don't want any air in it. Um, is it the right size catheter? And we want to wash our hands before we place it. So the most important thing that I feel is the restrainer. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the restrainer. But the restrainer needs to kind of hold for you while you're clipping the area. You want to clip generously, and then you want to provide an aseptic scrub. We use the same technique as we do with um, perioperative skin preparation. So we'll use the target technique. Uh, so um, it is important that the restrainer help you hold out the arm, especially if you're doing a cephalic, uh, to keep the area clean. So once it's cleaned and prepped, uh, the restrainer will hold the vein. Uh, if you're going to place, depending on where you're placing it, you want to make sure you're as distal as possible in the vein area. Uh, the reason being is that if you miss, you have more space. Um, there is an option of doing the medial side of the limb distal to the junction of the venous uh, of the cephalic and accessory cephalic veins. Um, this is a little bit more difficult, takes a little bit more skill. So here is a shot of the um, of the anatomy of the dog. If you can see, they have uh, you can see where the uh, cephalic vein is um, running into the uh, accessory vein there. Um, you want to make sure that your catheter is not too proximal. If it's too proximal, it will lay in the elbow and then it will um, be blocked off if the elbow is bent. This is called a um, catheter that is uh, um, positional. So the approach. So when you're making your approach, you want to puncture the skin and the vein in one swift movement. Um, if you're too gentle, the vein is going to move away from you uh, and it's going to just be a hack job when you're just kind of trying to squeeze around. You may need to puncture the skin with another needle before placing the catheter. catheter. That's called a pre-poke. If you really need to, if it's a desperate situation, you could try doing a venous cut down. So when you're placing this catheter, you want to have it at a, a 10 to 20 degree angle when you're placing. Uh, and then once you see blood, um, you'll notice that the blood will flow into the stylet and you will um, see the blood move up. You want to do that one 10 to 20 degree angle until blood, blood uh, flow is noted and then you kind of drop your angle. <clears throat> then after you drop your angle, um, using your dominant hand, you gently rotate the catheter off the stylet, you advance it forward into the vein, and then you withdraw the stylet. Um, as the needle is being removed, the blood will flow into the catheter, and then the restrainer needs to put their thumb um, over the dorsum of the leg, so they need to still hold the elbow and the stifle, but they're going to put their thumb over the where the catheter is um, entering the vessel, and this makes sure that you can put the cap on so that it's not as bloody. So once you place the cap on, um, now you can uh, wipe it off. Okay, this is an injection cap. It, below that it is a T-port. Um, you can put the injection cap or the back of the stylet on uh, while you're doing your first tape job. You want to make sure the area is dry though before you put in the uh, apply the tape, otherwise it won't stick. When we're applying the tape, we want to do sticky side up. Okay, we want to place it under the catheter. We want to come back over the catheter and then wrap it around the leg. Uh, you would then take your piece that is uh, has the cut in it and you would place it under the catheter and wrap it over. Then you would place a piece of gauze underneath it. 
uh, and then you can have the restrainer um, hold off again then you can change to your t-port if that's what you're choosing to do uh, you want to put that piece of gauze under there because it does again make it a little bit less bloody um, when you <laughs> put in your uh, when you put your tape on you always want to make sure that you tab the tape not tap the tape you want to tab the tape uh, because it makes it much easier to remove um, later. Okay, so risks of IV catheter placement is embolism. You may have get a malocclusion or an occlusion. You may get mal placement. Uh, you may break the catheter. This is a big deal. We don't want the catheter to break off. This is why we have to be careful when we're removing it. You may get some thrombophlebitis, which is swelling of the vein. Um, the vein will feel like a hard rope uh, if it you're they're getting a thrombophlebitis. You may have some overhydration if you're not being careful with how your fluid is set, and there may be hemorrhage. You do want to monitor the catheter. Uh, it should be replaced every three to five days. You want to flush it, um, I would say at least every six hours. You want to monitor the site for infection and swelling. You want to make sure that um, they don't have any discomfort and make sure that tape isn't too tight. You also want to monitor the animal for self-mutilation. This is a big thing that happens, especially in dogs. When in doubt, put on an e-collar. When we're removing the vet wrap, we want to, when we're removing the catheter, we want to remove the vet wrap first. This is why we tab our tape so we can take that um, piece of tape off that's uh, holding it onto the vet wrap. We want to um, remove the tape layer by layer if possible. Only if necessary do we need to try to cut it, and then we want to make sure that we're just using bandage scissors to remove it. You want to isolate um, the catheter and you want to cut away from the catheter uh, when you're taking it out to make sure that you don't um, cut the catheter, which will then go uh, into the vessel and um, it can cause embolism and it can cause some other problems. It can even cause death. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.